Good evening, everyone. Welcome into Hockey Night in Minnesota here on CARE 11, CARE 11 Plus, and the MNHockey.tv YouTube page. I'm Brandon Spratt, joined by Matt Harrington. And tonight we have a special game for you. This is the 2022 Walzer Invitational Championship game featuring Minnetonka, the visitors on the scoreboard in the blue jerseys, and Holy Family in the white sweaters. They're the home team. Matt, exciting matchup here tonight, a section matchup. Holy Family in their tournament debut all the way into the championship. Yeah, they had quite the uh, win last night, Brandon. It goes down as a tie on the scoreboard. But, of course, uh, they did have the shootout win, and that propelled them here to this championship match. The Skippers 12-1. and one. They knocked off Andover last night. That was a huge hurdle for them to finally beat Andover. All those close losses in a row. They finally beat the Huskies. And now they have to turn around and they get Holy Family. It was two emotional wins for both of these teams. What are you looking for here early from these these squads? Well, yeah, I think it's going to take a little bit here to settle into this game, as you mentioned, those emotional wins. And for Minnetonka, you mentioned getting over the hump uh, for their win over Andover. That snapped a six-game losing streak, five of which for, were just one goal apiece. So looking forward to seeing how these two teams adapt to each other. We haven't seen them play yet this season. And so I think that's going to be a factor is getting used to each other a little bit out there on the ice. Yeah, that's one thing that's really interesting about this matchup is these teams don't schedule one another in the regular season. They've only played twice, as far as I can tell, uh, it, you know, records from the MN or Minnesota Hockey Hub, if you will. And they were the section finals the last two years. So finally playing here in the regular season, and it should be a good one. And looks like we are going to get an anthem here tonight. We haven't done an anthem in uh, the late game on any of the nights so far. But we're going to do one quick. Puck drop. National Anthem's complete. We have a treat tonight, Matt. Jim Carroll is in the house doing PA. That's How cool right. is that? That yeah. kind of makes it feel like a big game. Absolutely. And uh, for those that don't know, of course, Jim Carroll is the uh, public address announcer for the Minnesota State High School League uh, high school hockey tournaments at the XL Energy Center. I believe he does the girls in addition to the boys. Yep, he, he does. Yep. So that's uh, very special. And I know he does some gopher hockey as well. He's kind of all over the place, but uh, uh, a true pro's pro here tonight and uh, very fitting for this championship game. Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited for this one. Skipper's 12-1. and one. Holy Family is 10-2-1. and one. We're just past the halfway mark of the regular season. We're through the holidays. This could be a little bit of a preview of a section final and uh, strap in and get ready. These two teams played in this building back in February. Holy Family losing an overtime just short of their first ever state tournament trip. And we are just about set for puck drop. Thank you for joining us here tonight. The 15th annual Walzer Invitational. And we will have a first time champion tonight. Either Minnetonka or Holy Family will win their first Walzer Invitational. Tonka fell in the championship game a year ago to Andover. Holy Family in their tournament debut and we're underway. Fox can't get it clear. It's Finnegan behind the net. She starts with Josie Hemp on the back end to the line. Here is Hemp. 
Back door, Rauch, oh, big save by Sedona Blair early. Yeah. How about Coach Cassano going to that line? Ruby Rauk, a big game last night. And has a chance there. Yeah, great play by Sedona Blair to recognize that uh, backdoor feed there. And a uh, very nice stop here early on. Minnetonka coming in waves here early on. Yeah, love to see that line, that third line for the Skippers, rewarded with a start up front tonight. Now Lindsay on the backhand. That's saved by Blair. Loose, Sedona looking to fish it out. She'll go to the line for Hemp. Waits patiently. Fires through uh, some traffic. Still loose as Blair fights it off. We didn't get a whistle. So a lot of times you get a quick whistle on one like that, but referees let him play. Sedura on her backhand. It's loose out front. Knudsen ties up. Helmsetter flips to Sander on the left side. And she'll dump it in. Did not gain the red line, though. Icing on the fire. Well, great opportunities again for the skippers, Brandon. But what you notice about Minnetonka, or excuse me, about Holy Family's defense is they kind of got a log jam of players there in the slot, including uh, Helmstetter and I believe Knudsen was there as well. So they're doing that uh, log jam, and uh, it's it's worked well here in the early going. Keppel on the dot against Avar. Avar wins it. Goldsworthy, good feed. Kleppinger shot. Blair is saved, and another chance kicked out there from Lauren Mack. What a start here for the Skippers. Quite the opposite of how they started last night's game. This is up the right side looking for Distad. And now Kleppinger behind the net. Up the left side. Takes a big kick off the boards for Mack. Drops it to Kleppinger. Now Mack in her own end. Goldsworthy pushes it ahead for Mack. Right side. Tries to drop it for Distad who wasn't waiting for it. Here's Larson through the middle. Distad, she can fly. Here she goes left side, working in on Paydosh. Skippers changing up the rest of their five. Jenna Allen, junior forward for Holy Family. Right side, helped in there by Ruby Lenk and tripped up behind the net. That's going to be a penalty. Early power play coming for Minnetonka. Touched up there. Skippers and their deadly power play. Get a chance two minutes in. Yeah, and you mentioned that power play, Brandon. Before we get started with that power play, we're going to take a look at the, some of the matchup stats here and the numbers for these two teams. And for Holy Family, 4.08 goals per game in Ataka with 4.85. And you see the power play, 38.6%. That is one of the best in the state. And the penalty kill, though, for Holy Family, 93.5. So very solid numbers for both these teams on the special teams. Strength on strength here. Skipper's early power play. Attempt to Kleppinger. And Lindsay, as they set up the umbrella, Avar out front. Sedura sets up in the corner. Lindsay at the half wall up top. Josie Hemp. Hemp shot. Fought off by Blair. Kicked toward the line. Skated ahead. Grayson Limke gains the red line. Dumps it in. Layla Hemp gets a touch. Leaves it for Ellie Kleppinger. 30 gone in the power play. Skipper's through the middle. Kleppinger to Avar. Right side, little pile up at the blue line. Sudura tangles with box off side, Minnetonka. Again, though, on that last sequence for Minnetonka before that clearance, it was Paydosh in front, the Dartmouth University commit. There's a couple of Ivy League commits on the ice tonight, Dartmouth being one, and, of course, Lindsey Avar committed to Cornell out in Ithaca, New York. Go Big Red. <laughs> Here's Josie Hemp. Sister Layla plays in goal. Sedura to Avar, backhand, and maybe caught the tip of the glove of Blair, was going wide. Sedura behind the net to Avar. Past Avar, it's Lindsay. Helmstetter ties up. Shugel and Sedura come together. Sedura, now Lindsay. It's Hemp. Plays catch with Ava Lindsay. Lindsay, shot. That's wide, catches the end boards. 45 now on the power play. Hemp to Sedura. Hemp fought off Blair. Lindsay trying to sweep the backhand toward goal. Picks up the puck in the corner. Hemp waits. And that's a right pad saved by Blair as they continue the shooting gallery early. Josie Hemp steps down, fires, and another save with Avar all up in the kitchen. Big time tie up out front with Valentini and Avar. Now Avar. 
Helps out along the end boards. That's intercepted by Box Kleppinger. Strong stick to win it back. Avar try to go back to Hemp. And that one deflects up over the top, catches the glass. Kendra Distad. Hemp, Distad, top of the circle. Fires, and she hits the goal post. That one up and out of play. A successful kill for the fire, but they were taking some fire. They sure were, Brandon, and that was a really good setup uh, by the skippers on the power play. One thing that Holy Family did well in what you have seen Minnetonka do in games past is target Ellie Kleppinger for that one-timer, almost like Alexander Ovechkin on the wing there uh, on the power play. You can't leave her open, and the Fire did a good job of preventing her from getting those uh, open scoring chances. That's quite the comparison. You just compared <laughs> Ellie Kleppinger to the second greatest NHL goal scorer of all time. Very similar on the power play in terms of the positioning. That's an on hemp. She fights that off. It's Larson behind the net. Or Carl, rather, number six. Apologies. Slid across. Ruby Rauch into the corner. Two goals against the Andover Huskies last night. That's kind of been a theme of those Andover Minnetonka games. It's not always the star player stepping up. It's a depth player like Ruby Rauch with her third and fourth goals of the season. What a move. Josie Lynn on her backhand. And Layla Hep eats that puck. Josie Lynn, a super sophomore. She's second on the team in scoring. She scored last night, showing off some moves there. Yeah, another extremely talented player on this Holy Family team and using her speed to her advantage there, but nice positioning by Hemp to make the save and keep this game scoreless. I haven't had much action down in the Holy Family offensive end in this game so far. Here goes Rauch. Mac rather, behind the net, Valentini. Avar thought the puck was there, but it was gone. Now Distad to the line. Josie Hemp getting a lot of touches early. Josie Hemp walks down, blocked out front. Knudsen sends it down the ice. Just enough legs for icing. Again, been a constant theme of, of getting shots blocked in the slot. Has uh, Minnetonka in their attempts. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to mix things up or if they'll go back to the same old and hope that they can avoid some bodies in the slot. But I'd like to see them work it more kind of around uh, the perimeter a little bit more than going straight toward the net with those shots. Edina certainly found that out last night as well. This is the Holy Family Fire game, how they play in their own ends. They are very, very disciplined. And both of these teams came in giving up just 14 goals in 13 games. As you saw, minuscule, minuscule goals against on that uh, team stats graphic. That was a hand pass to Minnetonka, so it'll take the face off into their D zone. Lindsay against Lynn. Skipper's control. Moved up the left side by Hemp. Off the stick of Lindsay, Sadura tried to settle it. Paydosh flips it out on the backhand for Katia Sander. Lynn looking for Sander. Tied up effectively, now Sidura. Stretch pass there, looking for Mack, a little bit out of her reach. Out to neutral, skippers are offside. Well, this has been a uh, terrific tournament, Brandon. We saw some really good games yesterday. Not so much in the quarterfinals where we had uh, three of the four games in running time, but uh, we certainly had some good ones yesterday, of course. Minnetonka, 4-2 win, empty netter there, and then a shootout win for the Fire yesterday over Edina. Yeah, and even the games on the consolation side were, were pretty good. Three of the four games were within two goals coming down the stretch. A Maple Grove win over Moore had ended up 5-1, but that was with two empty net goals. Grand Rapids had a nice comeback win, and they battled hard today against the top 10 Maple Grove team. That game finishing 4-2 with a late marker for the Crimson. Grand Rapids Greenway, very young team too. I think they'll be much improved in uh, the years upcoming. Box will flip it in. Holy Family looking to get that four check going. It can be very effective once they do. As Edina found out last night, that was just a back and forth slugfest. Hornets scored 10 seconds in, and Sedona Blair kept them out for literally the rest of the night, including the shootout. Almost 58 minutes of hockey and 13 shots 
in the shootout. We'll expand on that a little bit more as we get later. Speaking of the shootout, here's Casey Cronin, the shootout hero. Zero varsity goals. She scored the shootout winner for Holy Family. Just a great story. She had them in this game. Limke with a shot blocked. And now Carl picks it up. We played seven minutes with no score. Off a of skate, Distad picks it up. Kendra Distad drops it to Avar at the half wall. Down low for Distad. And Knutson for Holy Family up the glass. Knutson all the way across for Sander. Carl will send it down, and it will be icing. We're a little bit less than halfway through this first period, Brandon, and you know, kind of what I alluded to earlier when we were talking uh, just about the feeling out process of this game, and I think we're still getting that. Minnetonka has had the the better of the scoring chances here in the early going, but certainly Holy Family has uh, had some good looks too, and an offensive zone win for them. Pushed ahead here by Finnegan. Sidura was offside. Got the skates moving north-south a little bit too quickly. Offside there. I think, yeah, if you take out that early power play for Minnetonka where they had a lot of attempts, it's been pretty even and definitely been in that feeling out stage. So that early power play making things maybe feel a little more tilted than they are. Five on five. Hemp off the wind, skates it up left side. Josie Hemp shot, catches the glass. And now Limke, Hemp will have to hustle to get back in the play. Molly Ryan does a good job to fill in. Keppel wide, steered away by Layla Hemp. And now Sidura ahead. Has Lindsay on her left wing, or trailing. Ryan on her left wing. Lindsay behind the net. Blair with a shoulder save. Puck pops straight up in the air. Glove down Limke. Wheeling and firing. Lindsay's shot is blocked. Hemp will work it deep. Valentini overskated it a bit. Sidura to Ryan. Here's Josie Hemp. Good control by Finnegan to settle that puck. Zakrashek down low Sidura. To the side of the cage, tie up. There's Holy Family collapsing again around the front, and they will ice the puck. Well, one thing I noticed on that sequence there, Brandon, was the head coach of the fire, Randy Keppel, telling his uh, wingers to stay high up towards the point, as you saw. And we've mentioned it before, just the kind of the collapsing in the slot area. And if you leave those Minnetonka defenders open for a shot at the point, could be dangerous. So we saw head coach Randy Keppel telling his players, hey, stay high. Make sure you're preventing those shooting lanes. Yeah, that's a really good tactical point. And as well, if your wingers are low, you don't really have much of an outlet to get out of the zone. It's a little bit of a self, it's a little bit of a perpetuating cycle, if you will. To the point, Kleppinger. And that's toward Rauch. Stolen here by Josie Lynn, and she can fly. Lynn has Sander to her left. Lynn shoots loose. Hemp is down, it's still loose. And a whistle. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure how that thing stayed out. And I mean, what a play though from Josie Lynn to just use her size to her advantage, get in on the defender and just strip that one away. And you mentioned she's only a sophomore as well. I think she's gonna have uh, some colleges looking at her here uh, pretty soon. Incredibly talented player, nearly putting the fire on the board you're about halfway through this first period. Yeah, Josie Lynn is is definitely a game breaker. She scored a massive goal in the section final last year. It was a power play goal in the final eight minutes to tie it for Holy Family. That sent the game to overtime where Grace Sadura answered and sent Minnetonka to the X where they made it all the way to the state title game. But they almost didn't get there because of this Holy Family fire program. Definitely the two powers out of two double A. Yeah, I don't think there's any uh, doubt there that these two teams are the two favorites and you know, can't sleep on some of the other teams in that section, certainly. But, you know, Eden Prairie is kind of in a rebuilding transition, certainly, but they've always been a, a powerhouse as well. And I think all the sections this year in uh, 6A will be a tough one as well with, of course, the Hornets. going to be a lot of fun come February. 
Skippers get it deep. Valentini behind the net. Ooh, good forecheck. Mack able to seal it away. Comes to the line, Carl, through traffic, and glove down by Blair. Distad got an extra whack, and the fire will uh, not, not let her get away with that without a little bit of an extra shove. And that was good awareness, though, by Sedona Blair to kind of angle her head around the, the, the excuse me, the defenseman there and uh, get a good look at that shot. But you hey, mentioned it, that extra whack, certainly not uh, to the delights of the Holy Family fire here. That's a quick shot and flag down again, that time off the stick of Dissad. And you mentioned it with Sedona Blair. I think she does that better than a lot of goaltenders. She does track the puck very well, has a big frame, and she, anything she gets in front of, she's very likely to save. Good movement as well. Here's Mack. Avar back to Mack. One touch passing here. Up top, Finnegan. Through traffic, block it away. Cronin picks it up and flips toward her bench. Stays in play, and actually it hits someone in the bench. Faceoff is going to stay in Holy Family ice. I thought that stayed in play there, Brandon. I guess, uh, guess not. It was close, but obviously the refs have a better do than I do about uh, several dozen feet away and with a net in front of my eyes. The protective netting that is, of course. <laughs> well, in, in fairness, I thought it stayed on the sheet too, uh, but we both have glasses, so I don't know if you want to trust <laughs> us or not. <laughs> That's true. Good point. We'll, uh, we'll leave that to your discretion. Here goes Lynn. Through the middle. She's knocked off the puck, and Sidura runs into Helmstetter. I think we got an offside. It looked inadvertent. Sidura and Helmstetter coming together. Didn't know if we were getting a penalty or not. We'll play on. Yeah, just a offsides here, it looks like. So nothing significant. Good crowd here tonight at Braemar. Certainly the best of the week so far. It's filled in quite a bit, too, since the anthem. It was looking a little thin at first. But yeah, well, you know, it's, it's high schoolers, you know, late arriving crowd. Always seems to be. I've seen uh, my, my favorite and a mark of a good game onside here at the line. Lindsay snaps it. Blocked to the end boards. Now Sidura. That pass through the slot picked off by Helmsetter. She takes it up the right. Good long reach from Hemp. Lindsay digs away. Back to Knutson. Fire trying the long pass there. And nearly connects with Jenna Allen. Icing's waved off. Hemp, left side. Mack, ahead for Avar. She'll dump it and chase after it. Paydosh plays the boards. And they're going to wave that one off as it split two Tonka defenders there. Here's Larson. D to D with Carl. Skippers had to tag up. They do. Cronin behind the net. Four check coming from Zakrashek. Here's Rauk. One of a few heroes yesterday for Minnetonka. Through the middle, Leaper. Paydosh is down. Good reach from Limke. Toward the point, Goldsworthy. Up the glass. Here's Leaper. Off the skate of Box. Twisted behind the net, Paydosh. Up the boards, Kleppinger from the point and squeezed by Blair. Well, some of the Minnetonka fans there wanting a penalty for uh, Holy Family's Grayson Limke, but just kind of an inadvertent collision, nothing intentional. And as a result, nothing called here. So 4-16 to go in the first, but another good chance at the other end for the fire. That was set up by Helmstetter, who had a really good stick left defensively for Holy Family to start the charge. Lindsay against Lynn. Strong win by Josie Lynn. Shoe go behind the net, comes out to Sander. And they clear to neutral. Puck bounces around, Sander picks it up. Sander off the pad of Layla Hemp. And now Sidura. Left wing side, here's Lauren Mack. Or Molly Ryan, excuse me. Lynn 
in her own zone. Sadura picks it up behind the net. Good feed. Lindsay. Oh, that's a big blocker save. Just up over the top from Sedona Blair. Kleppinger gets through. Blair down. And she'll cover with Lindsay just outside her blue paints. Well, well done by Sedona Blair to recognize that uh, Lindsay was going up high upstairs um, on that attempt. And she just got enough of the blocker with it to keep it out. And then again, pouncing on that loose puck, not allowing a rebound. This is That is uh, two things that these goaltenders, both uh, Hemp and, of course, Blair do really well is preventing those rebounds. Finnegan, that's hit some traffic out front. And Limke pulls it away. Now Distad. Distad through the middle. Here goes Kendra Distad. Almost got to her edges. And around Paydosh. Mack. Down low. It's past Avar. Distad. To the point. Hemp good holds. Distad. Touch back for Hemp. Oh, good hands. Blocked down front. They score. It's Lauren Mack who gets the goal. Hemp's original bid was blocked down, but Mack with the finish. one nothing Skippers. Yeah, Lauren Mack has had a terrific tournament so far and just right place, right time. We mentioned Holy Family does a good job typically during the slot, uh, excuse me, in the slot. And that time, Lauren Mack had to have that quick hand-eye coordination there to fire that one home. And there's your opening goal of this game, Brandon, with just under three minutes to play in the first. So it's the Skippers by one on Lauren Mack's fourth goal of the season. Will awaits eagerly Jim Carroll's call. And here it is. Feel like I'm uh, back at the Exile Energy Center, Brandon. Gosh, isn't it great? Oh, it's awesome. Great to have Jim Carroll in the house tonight. I believe Josie Hemp should get an assist on that goal if they go back and check the tape, but that's not Jim's fault. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> he uh, he only announces what he's fed. And I appreciate how hard it must be to be an on-ice official and get all those passes right. The puck's moving so quickly. Yeah, I don't know how they do it, honestly. It's... Uh... Very impressive. It's definitely a skill. Tipped, they score! It's Leeper who tips in the long shot from Ellie Kleppinger. Two nothing skippers. Well, that's a huge goal for the skippers right after the first goal from Mack and Leeper had a goal, I believe against Maple Grove in the quarterfinals. And again, it's those sticks in front. You keep your stick on the ice. Good things are going to happen. And that's exactly uh, what happens for the Minnetonka Skippers, who are now ahead 2-0, completely opposite of last night's game where they were down 2-0 in the first. Now Leaper's right back on the attack. What a move! And she sends it just wide. So Rout gets an assist, Leaper's second goal of the season. And just like that, two quick goals for the Skippers. They lead it to nothing. Here's Limke, drops it off the box. Box works to the slot, rolls off her stick. Helmstetter picks it up. Minute 40 to go in the period. Sharp angle shot, blocker down, and skated away by Minnetonka. Here's Rauch. She'll get it deep and go off for a change. Box wraps the boards. Helm setter on the right side. All the way across, but left it short. Picked off Finnegan. Ahead. Sedura through the middle. Upended. And a penalty coming. Yeah, this was a, a pretty clear trip here on the fire. And it's one that you feel like is a good penalty to take if there is such a thing because that was a going to be a very prime opportunity. It's going to go against Olivia Paydosh. And now this is a big chance for the Skippers. If they can go up 3 nothing here after this first period, that would set them in a very strong position for the rest of this game. But if you're the fire, got to kill this off. At least get to the second period down by no more than two goals. Absolutely agree. This is a very important minute 10 in this game. 
Skippers retreat to their own zone. Kleppinger to Sidura. A minute to go in the period. Sidura looks to work inside. Cronin, good positioning there. Lindsay to the line. It's Hemp and now Lindsay. Hemp, side of the goal, Sidura. Sharp angle, caught the glass. Kleppinger with 35 in the period. Down low for Lindsay. Up top, Kleppinger. Fires one through. Blair makes the initial save. Didn't know where it was. Valentini pulls it away. What a hold at the line by Hemp. Fire on their heels because they can't get it clear, but here the puck is deflected out of play. Good stick, Valentini. Well, very good sequence there by the uh, skippers, Brandon, and they continue to look very strong on the power play. Maybe one last draw, 20 seconds to go. Second period, or first period rather, my bad. Fire win it, Knutson will carry it out. They have some numbers here, but Kleppinger gets to the spot first. Plays it for Hemp, could be some numbers here in the final 10. Slid ahead, Avar's onside, Avar just wide. Sudura in the corner, behind the net, Avar looks to wrap it around. Helmstetter clears away the front. Josie Hemp, Kendra Distad wheels and fires right at the horn. And Blair makes the save. A well, wild first period, Brandon. And uh, boy, did the skippers look good the final few minutes. They get a couple of goals to make their lead 2 nothing. And, uh, you know, we talked about settling in a little bit. Sure seems like Minnetonka has settled in looking very strong here. But again, a lot of game time left. But Holy Family going to be on the kill here for 44 seconds to begin the second period. All right, we thank you for joining us here tonight on CARE 11 Plus, uh, the CARE 11 app, care11.com, all the different places you're watching us, mnhockey.tv YouTube page. We'll get shots here quick. Unofficial shots down in the box. I think I heard 24 to 7. I believe you're correct, yes. So, uh, yeah, that was a deluge, if you will, at Sedona Blair's goal. Maybe lucky the fire are only down two. All right, we've hit the intermission. I'm Brandon Spratt, joined by Matt Harrington. You're watching Hockey Night in Minnesota. Walzer Invitational Championship Game Edition. It's the Minnetonka Skippers over the Holy Family Fire. 2-0 after one. We'll be back with a second very shortly. Behind every world-class athlete, there's a team who takes extra care to support them. At Affinity Plus, we take extra care with all your banking goals, from checking accounts to credit cards. Our biggest victory? Helping you win in the ways that matter most. Affinity Plus. Your college experience begins with your dream. Your time at St. Cloud State will uniquely be your own, but your journey will be guided by our community. Be you, be bold, be a Husky. They say good things come to those who wait, but greatness, that's a different beast. It doesn't come when it's called, it won't wander up to those who do nothing. You have to bait it with the sweat you leave on the ice. You gotta push through the pain, smile through every ache, and suffer every shift. You gotta chase it. All in the name of the game you love. Because greatness comes to those who take it. Sniper's Edge Hockey is your one-stop shop for your at-home hockey training needs on and off the ice. Find the perfect start to your at-home training area with slick tiles, synthetic ice, or a rink liner. Or upgrade your home setup with one of our top quality training tools 
to help you work on soft hands, all of your deeks and dangles, perfect your one-timer, and improve the power and accuracy of your shot. Find it all online and in stock for immediate shipping at snipersedgehockey.com. where everything was hockey. Finding the skate. Here comes Steve to not goal all alone. In Minnesota, there is.
Behind every world-class athlete, there's a team who takes extra care to support them. At Affinity Plus, we take extra care with all your banking goals, from checking accounts to credit cards. Our biggest victory? Helping you win in the ways that matter most. Affinity Plus. What if there was a place where everything was hockey? Oh, the skate. Here comes Steve to not go all alone. In Minnesota, there is. Go! Welcome back to Hockey Night in Minnesota. This is the Walzer Invitational 15th Annual Championship Game between the Minnetonka Skippers with a two-goal lead over the Holy Family Catholic Fire. Matt, what's our scoring summary from that first period? Yeah, Brandon, both those goals coming late in the first period. One with 2.59 remaining. First, it was Lauren Mack with the goal. And the assist going to Kendra Distad and Lindsay Avar. And then also the second goal for the fire not long after that i believe about 90 seconds or so later 
Senja Leeper with her second goal of the year in the tournament on the assist from Ellie Kleppinger and Ruby Rauch, who I think has had a terrific tournament. She had a couple of goals, of course, yesterday. And she's been a player that, again, maybe not some of the bigger names like Sidura or Lindsay, et cetera, uh, but she's been really good this tournament. I think anytime you can make a good impression on your coaching staff and Coach Tracy Cassano, just a sophomore as well, Ruby Rauch. So a lot of room to grow and improve as well on top of the skill she already has. Well, yeah, it's just kind of the reality of, of this line chart. I mean, I'm looking at the skippers' lines. You have four D1 commits in your top six, and then you have four sophomores. Molly Ryan is the only uncommitted upperclassman, so it's – and she absolutely could end up somewhere. For sure, for sure. You know, it's, as maybe a later commit. So it's just the depth of this skippers program, especially up front. And it's Sedura and Lindsay leading the way, but they haven't had to score much in this tournament for the skippers to be successful, which is very impressive. So 40 to go on a carryover power play time here. Lindsay Avar for Minnetonka drops to Lindsay at the half boards. Here's Lindsay down low. Sedura looks to jam it, but a good stick put there by Knudsen. This is to the line with Joe. Ava Lindsay pivots, flagged down by Blair toward the side of the net, pops in. She fights it off, and Holy Family gets it clear. There's been a lot of that. Scrambles in front tonight. And now it's Josie Hemp who gets it from sister Layla. Up the right side, Sidura. Holy Family's back to full strength. That one catches the glass on the sharp angle shot. And Sidura at the dot, backhand. Lindsay fills. Oh, that was close. Off the shoulder of Blair and pops into the opposite corner. Oh, deflected. Caught the top of the dasher, I think. It took a wild bounce. Now Helmstetter plays left side for Paydosh. Paydosh on her backhands. Looking to work to the front. Center to the slot. Rauch plays it. Shugo with a good reach to hold the zone. Box, pivots. Knocked down by Rauk, and part off the boards, it's Rauk. Snaps on cross ice, blocked down by Lynn. She's gonna get there first on the four check. Lynn fights through some contact with Hemp. Keppel fills at the line, gets a deep. Better here from the fire, this is what they excelled at last night on the four check. And it comes fresh off that momentum from killing a penalty. And some big saves as well from their goaltender, Sedona Blair. Goldsworthy fans on a clearance. Lynn has Keppel out front, sharp angle. Blocked down by Hemp. And hits the glass from Rauch. Here's Helmstetter. Drops it back to Shugel. And her deep partner is Pace. Pace. Hard off the boards. With Limke. Helmstetter. Probing pass right side. Too far for box. Hemp does well to the boards. Avar skates ahead, snapshot, good block. Lauren Carl holds the line. Carl, Rister caught the glass. Avar back to her feet. Valentini away from Distad, but it knocked away there toward the front. Limke gloves it down. And skates it out left side. Dumps it in off Carl. Limke gets another chance. That's off the stick there of Larson. Couple skippers running into one another. Created that space. Allen ties up with Lauren Carl. Larson takes the puck. Out to Avar. They do well to chip it to center. Valentini, right side for Allen. And here's Mack. Lauren Mack tries to drag inside. Defended well. Allen tries to jam it out. Valentini, long feed, cut off Kleppinger. To the dot, shot, and Blair stretches out and squeezes that one with Lauren Mack in the crease. I think that's our first whistle of uh, the second period here, Brandon, but a very good sequence of saves from Blair and really nice shift as well on the Minnetonka end for Grace Larson, who... Stepped in front of a shot, got that clearance for the skippers. They're going to need more of that here in the second period, but already looking good. Here goes Mael Shugel. 
Left wing side. Watched by Goldsworthy toward the dot for Keppel. Good play by Ava Lindsay. She's pinned up on the boards by Sander. Goldsworthy off the glass to Sidura ahead. Lindsay at full stride. Alert though was Knutson. Back to Knutson behind the net. Half wall Sander gets it out. And this is an icing. Close uh, play there, but of course, Elmstead are not quite getting there in time. And uh, again, 12.49 to go. We're moving quite quite quickly here in this second period, but um, it's been a good one so far. Of course, you take out a two, three minute stretch of the late stages of the first, and this has been a pretty even game for the most part. Sedona Blair just continues to have an outstanding tournament for Holy Family. Really keeping her team in the game so far with some big saves. Yeah, she's certainly not the reason why they're down 2 nothing. Just a much different game for the Fire last night than the one against Edina. I'm sure they knew that coming in. This one would have a little bit more pace. That's off the boards. Limke wins a board battle up ahead to Helmstetter. Great stick, though, by Josie Hemp. Holy Family bench wanted a penalty. Dumped in by Cronin. Here's Finnegan, who's being trusted more and more. She started the season on the third pair, but has earned more minutes as the season's gone on. Pushed wide by Jenna Allen, who herself has had a great tournament. Great pass there, probing, looking for box. Cronin holds the line. In deep, Finnegan and Allen into the boards. Good shift for the third line here for Holy Family. Cronin. Fires, Hemp, save. Fished out of there by Zakrashek. Beaten down the ice by Leeper. And it's an icing on Minnetonka. We mentioned that third line, Brandon, for the fire. We haven't really seen a ton of them this game, of course, being the third line. But that was probably the best sequence they've had this period and, and in quite some time as well if you go back to the first. So uh, a good sign of that depth for Holy Family and uh, both these teams using their numbers to their advantage here in this one. Yeah, and another icing here, but that was a little bit of juggling with that line too. Haley Box took a shift there with Allen and Lank. Box normally up on the first line, so trying to work things, get a little offense going. We saw Sammy Cowger try that last night against this Holy Family team. Now it's Randy Keppel who has to try to juggle his lines to get a little offense going. Yeah, and I, I think there's... Nothing wrong with that at all. If you're down 2 nothing, why not mix things up if it uh, wasn't working before? Back at the half boards. Snaps it far side for Distad. That was a little bit behind. Played by Valentini. Lynn and Avar collide. Boy, they are uh, letting them play here tonight, aren't they, Brandon? A lot a of little uh, bit. questionable potential body checks, but that's kind of the direction that uh, girls high school hockey is going in the more physical side of things. It, it is, it is. Sticked away there by Hemp. Yeah, that, the Holy Family Edina game last night was very physical. Uh, definitely some swallowing the whistles, probably even more so than this, to be honest. Kleppinger, Dissad, works into the middle. Strong stick though, Fire could turn it over and turn it up. Helmstetter, fans out, but they're offside. Yeah, that was... Uh, Quite the effort there from Box to try and stay on side. But nothing doing there. And I'm looking at the uh, the Holy Family roster, too. And I know we've talked about the D1 commits, but you can't help but notice some of the underclassmen on this roster. Haley Box being one of them. She's just a freshman. And I believe she is the leading scorer, correct me if I'm wrong, on this Holy Family team. But that is a good sign. And if, you know, Holy Family can compete, with the very top of the top here in double A, they're going to be a, in a good spot even after this season. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Haley Box is a freshman in her first year of RC hockey. 12 goals, 20 points leads the team. And second leading scorer, Josie Lynn, just a sophomore. Lindsay circles. Tried to feed it. Knutson up the boards, can't clear. Lindsay goes toward Ryan. Carl from the point. Tipped and hammered down the ice. 
Layla Hemp sees it go just wide of the post. 9.44 to go here in the second again. If you're just joining us, 2 nothing, and Minnetonka had both their goals late in the first period. First one came with 2.59 left on the clock. And then the uh, second one came about a minute and a half after that. And so looking forward to see what we get here the rest of the way, almost halfway through the game. Skippers win it to the line. It's Hemp. Half boards. Back up top for Hemp. Their traffic knocked down. And Leeper had another chance that was turned away. Here goes Josie Lynn. Works around Finnegan. Boy, she can fly. Lynn centers a little bit behind Sander. Now it's her opposite 18, Ruby Rauch. Rauch will flip it deep. Beats Valentini to the spot. They go hard in the boards. Leeper goes to the opposite dot. Sander picks it off up the ice. Finnegan plays the boards. And here's Shugel. Actually, Sander shoots right in the glove of Hemp. Good ideas again from Holy Family in the offensive zone, but when you have a goaltender like Layla Hemp in net, it's very difficult for uh, Holy Family to create second chance opportunities, not allowing many rebounds. That's been a good sign for the skippers to have a goaltender like that. And of course, Hemp has stopped everything she's seen so far in this game. Layla will be uh, representing the Team USA at the IHF Under 18 World Championships. As a sophomore, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Not a lot of players get that honor. And Layla will go. And by the way, when she's gone, Skippers will have a very capable backup in Ashlyn Hazlett, who uh, I believe is, you know, she's been in development camps and, and USA U14s and 15s and things like that too. So it's, it's a lot of riches in goal for the Skippers. But Layla had to wait her turn. Skippers had a fine senior goaltender in Sophia Johnson last year that backstopped them all the way to a state title game. Well, and the thing, too, with uh, Ashlyn is that um, she's had some experience already at the varsity level this year filling in for Layla Hemp, so I don't think she'll have any problem uh, picking up the duties while Hemp is gone. Mac fans on a clearance. Just sad, try to get it out. It's past Goldsworthy. Here's Limke toward the slot. Good play by Lauren Goldsworthy. That looks like a coach's kid right there. <laughs> it sure does. Of course, Goldsworthy is the daughter of Sean Goldsworthy, who is the boys' head coach, head hockey coach here at Minnetonka. Do we know how they did today? I think they were up at Grand Rapids. Yes, I will pull that up for you here in just a moment. Wonder if, uh, yeah, maybe they didn't, probably didn't quite make it back for that one. Maybe, coach maybe he's tuning in right now. Yeah, maybe. That'd be wonderful if you are, Goldie. Sedura on the one-timer. It's still loose. They dig away, and oh, a little extra finish. Two points for a takedown in the crease. And uh, no surprise, it's number seven in blue in the middle of some of that. That's just <laughs> the type of player Grace Sedura is. Yeah, she loves to get in the middle of those, and I think she's actually going to go to the box here along with a holy family player. I'm trying to see the number. It looks like it's Helmstetter that's going to go. For, I'm sorry, that is uh, Knutson, rather, uh, for Holy Family. So, Sedura and Knutson will sit for two, I'm assuming probably just roughing coincidental minors. And we should play on here five on five as if nothing happened. Yeah, Grace Sedura scored that overtime winner to send Minnetonka to state last year in here in this building and it's just an absolute thriller of a hockey game one of the best overtime periods i've seen and it only lasted about seven and a half minutes we were very close to resurfacing the ice after the eight minute ot and sedura ended it on the power play here goes helm center for holy family looking to get it deep and it's lynn there She's in alone, though, as the fire change. Paid off from the line, blocked it away. Strong stick from Sander. Lindsay got positioning. Here's Limke. Paid off at the line. Works into the middle. Fires off the goalpost. Rebound hammered. Still loose. 
for the corner, and Finnegan fishes it out. Paydosh caught iron and solid iron at that. And it's icing on Minnetonka. Well, there's your best chance of the game right there for Holy Family and Paydosh. Oh, so close. And uh, boy, that would have been a huge momentum boost for the fire. I will say, though, that they look significantly better than they did in the uh, final couple minutes of that first period where they surrendered the two goals. They seem to have found their groove a little bit, starting to play at the same tempo as these Minnetonka skippers. Kleppinger to the line. It's now Zach Rashek, who has Rauch in behind the defense. Could slide it past Paydosh. Oh, Ooh. big collision into the boards. Pop Paydosh might have been tripped up, but also could have been inadvertent as well. Happened so quickly. Good to see everybody back up, though. Here's Box. Goes to Paydosh, who fans on her backhand. Leaper, and here's Rauk. Patient, behind the net. Knocked down Ooh, there, and that's gonna be a penalty. Easy call there for the official. Shugo will go. Body checking the call. Yeah, we've uh, mentioned that there could have been a few body checking calls earlier in this game, but there's your first one there, and I think that one was pretty uh, clear on the fire. That's going to be on Shugo, and again, she will sit for two. So we get the very rare at four on three. You don't see that very often. And again, uh, it's on only... Four. I'm sorry, five on yep. four. Thank you. They've got it on the board, yeah, so it threw me off a little bit Yeah, there. usually they don't put the coincidentals on the board. But yeah, I, I hear you there. Lindsay. Oh, give and go. Didn't connect. And Hemp is forced out to neutral. Hemp to Kleppinger. Miscontrolled and pushed ahead now for Lindsay. Here goes Ava Lindsay. Works into the middle. And cleared. A little bit flat footed. Kleppinger will get there just ahead of Limke. Here's Mac. Lindsay. Down low for Mac. Ava Lindsay to the dot. Rister fought off. And the fire will clear. Good clearance. Gets some fresh legs out here for the remainder of this penalty kill halfway through it. Touch pass to Distad from Avar. Hemp calling for it up top, gets it. Working down low, shot, Finnegan hits the glass. Two car pile up in the corner. To the top, it's Hemp, has a lane, shoots off a skate. 40 on the power play. Distad, all the way across Finnegan. Ramps up and blocked, Hemp. And Distad, Hemp, back with Distad, 30 now on the power play, trading places, good drop pass, Hemp, good reach, shot, big save, Blair puts it in behind. That one was going top corner, Blair saw it all the way, here's Josie Hemp. Wrist shot from Distad, another save. Behind the net, on the backhand, that was Lindsay. Now up the ice, and Shugo returns. Full two minutes there without a whistle, I believe. And we will get a whistle here, because the fire iced the puck. Sadura and Knutson return. Well, that was just a, a great sequence of puck movement there by the Minnetonka skippers in the offensive zone. And there aren't many teams in the state that can move it better than them, just the... the uh, Drop passes on the back end, beautifully done, moving it around the perimeter. And what that does is it forces the goaltender for Holy Family, Sedona Blair, to have to move and adjust in a very quick manner. And she's been able to do that so far on these power plays. But again, a good sign of, of things to come for the skippers. Here goes Lynn. Lynn, right side, works inside on Kleppinger. Avar, Holy Family faithful wanting a penalty there, and that one sent up out of play. It was close. I mean, you could definitely make a case. I w wouldn't have been surprised to see a penalty called, but 
again, I can see why the referee lets it go. It's just that little bump there. And is that interference or not, of course, is the question. But you can hear the Holy Family bench wanting uh, a penalty but not going to get one. Keppel against Lindsay. Kleppinger supports ahead to Ryan. Left wing side. She's knocked Ooh. out. And that's a penalty again on the fire. Delayed call. Lindsay floats it toward goal. Blair blocks it down. And maybe some more extracurriculars. But I think just the one penalty to the fire. Yeah, and you just can't have those kind of penalties happen. Ones that are avoidable and it's going to be a body checking call again here. That's the second one against the fire. And I understand you're in a position here to uh, down two with 3.13 to go in the period, but those are the kind of penalties when you look back on a game, if you end up losing, you go, hey, we could have avoided that. And that's one that the fire would like to have back. And the physicality and uh, it's also on Knutson, who was in the box uh, for the same offense earlier. So, again, Holy Family will have to go shorthanded here. They need to get through this second period. And head coach Randy Keppel chatting with the officials right now. It was a pretty clear penalty, though, I'd say, from I, our vantage point. I mean, he, we're completely yes. at the other end of the ice. But, I mean, you could see and hear it, certainly, uh, up against the board. So... Now this is where Blair needs to come up big again here for the fire, though. You do not want to go down 3-0 here. This is Hemp. And Lindsay plays catch with Hemp. Hemp, shot. Loose out front. Where is it? I have no idea. It's at the far other end of the ice. Fished out by Sidura. Kleppinger, quick shot over the top. Blair doesn't have her stick either. It's stuck in the goal. As she'll get it back now from a teammate. And blasts it. Oh. Caught the glass. Lying on the goal line. And it stays out. Sadura. Force wide. To the line. Kleppinger. Kleppinger blocked there by Keppel. Sounded like a skater. A shin pad. Hemp. Lindsay. Up top. Hemp. One timer. Kleppinger deflected in behind. Trying to jam at it, and Blair covers the lower part of the net. Oh, Blair's not happy. she takes a couple whacks there. <laughs> and it's Sedura again in the middle of it. And uh, Blair came right out. She was furious about that extra whack, and you got to be careful for the skippers. You don't want to pick up a penalty for roughing after the play, and I think Sedura's getting a little warning here from the referee saying, hey, settle it down, whistle's blown, let's move on. Yeah, important note about this Tonka power play. Sedura was in the box for the entire last yes. one. So she gets out there. She can cause havoc there around the front. Another win for the Skippers. They have their second unit out at the moment. Goldsworthy to Distad. Great pass. Carl, that's a little high. Odd bounce off the glass. Here goes Haley Box. Box on the right wing. Shot ramps up off a stick of Goldsworthy. Catches the glass. Helmstetter. And Minnetonka gets it back with Goldsworthy. Under two to go in the second period. Goldsworthy's pass straight to Helmstetter. Doing good work. And now Rauch. Into the corner with Paydosh. Ryan there for some puck support. Goldsworthy up top. This is Distad. Distad shoots, catches the glass, going, trying to go near side. Goldsworthy out to neutral. Knutson returns in five seconds. We're going to have another penalty. Brandon here, the official had his arm up right away. It's going to be on the fire here for a slash. And so Minnetonka going to get a very short Five on three for two seconds, and then it will be back to a five on four. I believe that was Box that went in to the box, fittingly. Box to the box. 
12, pen 12 penalty minutes coming into tonight. Picks up a minor here. Lindsay on the dot, a minute 14 here in the second period. So Knudsen returns, Sadura walks down. That's gloved down by Blair. And Avar shoved out of the crease. So a minute 54 of power play, and just like the end of the first period, it will be Minnetonka on the power play for the rest of the frame, unless they score. Yeah, and now we didn't quite see that slash on the play. I believe it was behind the play on that last sequence, but again, Blair has been busy over the last handful of minutes and needs to be here again. Hemp to Lindsay. They trade places. Lindsay, snapper, rebound. Still loose, Lindsay, and here's Avar up top for Hemp. Here's Kleppinger, Rister, another save by Blair. She is so tough to beat. Avar into the boards with Valentini. And now I think the skippers take a penalty here. As Valentini knocked down. Yep. Avar will go to the box. Likely a body check. I believe it's going to be a hold, Brandon. Let's see here. Yep. Okay, you're right. Yep. It will be a hold. And that was a tough play in the corner. I think you could have made the case for both of those players to go in the box because they were kind of jousting. But the official... Just calls the one, and it's this back referee that uh, has called the last few penalties. He's been a busy, busy man here tonight. So, Well, I, I just got to say, after this section final between these two last year, I'm not surprised our referees are busy tonight. Uh, in that game, Minnetonka was one for five on the power play. Holy Family, one for seven. Wow. A lot of pims in that game. A lot, a lot of pims. And uh, we might be matching that tonight. Minnetonka's had at least five or six looks. Helmstetter's knocked down. Oh, and Hemp with a big save out front. I'm not sure how that wasn't a penalty against Minnetonka. They got lucky there, Brandon. Finnegan and Lynn tied up. This is, uh, this is ready to pop off at some point. Hemp to Lindsay. Goes back to Finnegan. We're four on four here. Finnegan toward the front. They score. 3-0 skippers as that's another one tipped out front. Well, just as we mentioned, a potential penalty that doesn't get called. The skippers go down to the other end and score here, and that gives them some more insurance. 3 nothing now the lead, and that is a tough one to swallow if you're the Holy Family Catholic Fire who are now down by three. They're not out of this game by any means, but... There were times of this period where they looked so close to getting this game within one, and now they've got even more work to do potentially here in the third period coming up. So Bella Finnegan is credited with the goal, assisted by Josie Hemp. For Finnegan, it is her, hold please, it is her third goal of the season. Josie Hemp gets the assist. We'll get shots here momentarily. Well, again, another exciting period, a lot of action. And, I mean, if you're the fire, you're not out of this by any means, but they've got to stay out of the box here in the third period. And, uh, you know, if they can not let their frustrations get to them, I think they'll be in an okay spot to try and make a comeback. But, of course, Minnetonka is going to come at you uh, very hard in this game, and that's what they've been doing especially on the power play special teams of course are a big part of their uh their game plan and their mojo and it's working here tonight it's worked for them in the tournament and if they can allow other teams to take minor penalties they're going to make them pay yeah an interesting scene there coach keppel had his team gathered around in a huddle around the bench before sending them off the ice don't know if that was any special message or if just to give the skipper some time to get off the ice with Neither team being the home team, both teams are in a guest locker room here, so they go off on the same end of the ice at Braemar. We'll be a, uh, we're still four on four for 46 seconds into the third. It'll be a short power play after that for Holy Family. But Minnetonka gets the only goal of the period very late. Bella Finnegan, the tally. That's a tough one for Holy Family, like you said. Skippers by three after two. You're watching Hockey Night in Minnesota. For myself, Brandon Spratt, my partner, Matt Harrington, will be back with the third very shortly.
Behind every world-class athlete, there's a team who takes extra care to support them. At Affinity Plus, we take extra care with all your banking goals, from checking accounts to credit cards. Our biggest victory? Helping you win in the ways that matter most. Affinity Plus. Your college experience begins with your dream. Your time at St. Cloud State will uniquely be your own, but your journey will be guided by our community. Be you, be bold, be a Husky. They say good things come to those who wait, but greatness, that's a different beast. It doesn't come when it's called, it won't wander up to those who do nothing. You have to bait it with the sweat you leave on the ice. You gotta push through the pain, smile through every ache, and suffer every shift. You gotta chase it. All in the name of the game you love. Because greatness comes to those who take it. Sniper's Edge Hockey is your one-stop shop for your at-home hockey training needs on and off the ice. Find the perfect start to your at-home training area with slick tiles, synthetic ice, or a rink liner. Or upgrade your home setup with one of our top quality training tools to help you work on soft hands, all of your deeks and dangles, perfect your one-timer, and improve the power and accuracy of your shot. Find it all online and in stock for immediate shipping at snipersedgehockey.com. where everything was hockey. Oh, oh. skate. Here comes Steve to not go all alone. In Minnesota, there is. Go! Behind every world-class athlete, there's a team who takes extra care to support them. At Affinity Plus, we take extra care with all your banking goals, from checking accounts to credit cards. Our biggest victory? Helping you win in the ways that matter most. Affinity Plus.
What if there was a place where everything was hockey? Here comes Steve's and I goal all alone. In Minnesota, there is.
Tokyo. Welcome back inside Braemar Arena, 15th annual Edina Walzer Holiday Tournament. And it is Minnetonka, one period away from their first championship here at the Walzer. They lead 3-0 over Holy Family. Not a lot of scoring in that period. It came late. What did we see back in the second, Matt? Yeah, the only goal of that period, as you mentioned, coming late from Bella Finnegan. Uh, single assist going to Josie Hemp on the goal. So Finnegan, the sophomore, with the assist going to the senior, Josie Hemp. By the way, shots on goal through two periods of play, 39-15 in favor of the Skippers. And I think that kind of is reflected on the scoreboard as well. Yeah, that feels right, too. That's not a vanity 39. That's, no. That, I think that's legit, to be honest with you. That's courtesy of our very talented statistician, Todd Grover. Yes. With, with keeping track of the numbers here tonight. We'll start four on four here in the third. Box is in the box, as you said. 46 seconds of... Four on four will turn into a 36 second power play for the fire on the back end. By the way, Holy Family will have their next game on the road, Mound West Tonka. Then they finally come home after about three weeks on the road. And how about this one? Gentry Academy coming to town. That's going to be a great game. Absolutely. Valentini from her own zone spins away from pressure. Fans like that one. Valentini pushed it ahead past Finnegan. Along the end boards. Oh, took a bit of an odd hop. Out to Limke. Works down. Snapper. Pat at full extension for Hemp. You see the M there on Layla Hemp's pads. Looking good over there. Certainly. How many players do that uh, at the high school level? Yeah. And black to boot. Here's Distad, who spins back. Short power play now for the fire as Sedura's shot sails high, catches the glass. Tonka shorthanded, but they have the puck. And Goldsworthy sends it right back to Lynn. Here's Valentini. Great forecheck by Sedura to sweep it in deep without committing an infraction. Box on the tape of Limke. Sedura lost a glove. It's out of neutral ice. We play on. That's just the type of player she is. Skippers are full strength. Avar returns up the wing. Lynn blocked up and out of play. Yeah, I think Coley family wanted a penalty there on Sedura, but in my mind, I don't think it was. I think the referees were right to let that one go. I feel like that's uh, been kind of a theme that we've talked about a lot is uh, penalties that have t these two teams have wanted that have not been called, but Certainly there's been plenty of called penalties already in this game, and who knows what we'll get in the third. Well, neither of these teams are strangers to the box. I mean, they're aggressive, they're hard, and physical teams, and they take penalties, but they often kill them off. Both of these teams over 90% on the kill, so it's it's sort of the, the, the risk you take, if you will. As a kicked out save there by Blair on Distad. That's deflected, bouncing puck settled by Cronin. Turned over to Distad. Works her way to the outside. Distad off the shin pads of Knutson. Into the corner. Distad and back with Knutson for Holy Family. Plays to the boards. Poked past Carl. Knutson gains the red line and dumps it in. Fire needing a change, but the lone forechecker, Sander, doing a nice job. Puck up ahead, Zach Rushek. Ooh, nifty move. Zakrashek dances down. Blair the save. Cleared away by Shugel. Here's Larson. Through traffic wide. Carl works down to the half boards. Good hold by Larson at the line. Blair knocked it down. Defenders cleared away. Larson off a stick. They knock it down again. Again, just protecting that middle of the ice. Fire do it so well. Really nice play there by Zakrashek to... Put the dangles on there for the skippers and didn't work out, but a, a great move nonetheless here in the third. They battle inside the offensive zone for Holy Family. Leaper digging away. Who can get the puck out? Eventually it is fished out. 
and Lauren Carl off the end or off the boards. Shot from a long way out from Allen is squeezed by Layla Hemp. Well, these are the kind of opportunities that the Fire need here in this third period. Again, down three nothing. There's still plenty of time to play, but they're going to need to uh, continue this offensive pressure, stay out of the box here if they're going to have any chance of coming back in this game. Finnegan ahead to Lindsay. Support from Ryan. Limke gets it out. It's past Finnegan. It's going to be waved off for an icing. Finnegan and Allen into the boards. Hemp battles there. A good tie up and pulled away by Ava Lindsay. Rink wide pass for Sidera. Onside. Works inside on Valentini. Nice back check. Allen steals it away. Looking for Lenk. Sidera gets it right back. Sidera off the shin pads there of Valentini. Allen up the ice. Icing on Holy Family. We've talked about the defense of the fire and how good they've been. Again, blocking shots. You see it there with Valentini. And again, 12.49 to go. Shots now over 40 in the game for the Skippers. Averaging, um, or on pace, I should say, probably right at about the 60 mark at this point, which would be very, very impressive against a good team like Holy Family. It's been a while since I've seen that many shots in a game, for sure. Aber almost lost the controls. Works inside on Helmsetter. Shot. The rebound was there for Distad. Couldn't get control of it. Kleppinger. And penalty behind the play. It's going to be on Itaka. Kepa lost her stick. And that's dumped in. I think it was as a result of the penalty, to be fair. Still a delayed call. Knudsen. To Paydosh. Blair at the bench. Six skaters out for Minnetonka, or Holy Family rather. Eventually touched up by Goldsworthy. And we get a penalty. Yeah, it's going to be a tripping minor here. And uh, Taylor Keppel was the one that drew the penalty and went down for the skippers. And, or I'm sorry, for the uh, fire. So the skippers go to the box and we'll get a much needed power play for Holy Family here. 12.07 remaining in the third. This is one where you've got to score right here if you're the fire. Lauren Mack, goal tonight. She sits for tripping. Here's Hemp. Pinned up against the wall by Keppel. Lynn down low to Keppel. Behind the net. Finnegan will get there first to win the race and send it up the ice. 200 foot clear. Valentini's there under pressure from Sidera. Valentini gets the turn. Works through the middle of the ice. Ooh, Still nice Valentini move. to the net. Oh, and Hemp kicks out the left pad as Valentini looked to go end to end. That's a big part of her game. A very strong skater. An uncommitted senior to boot, which surprises me a little bit. There's still time to commit. Still time to commit, absolutely. Limke for box, but a good play by Distad. She'll take it and eat some time. To the corner. Up top, Kleppinger. Rister into the corner. Allen with 11 minutes to go in the game. 50 on the Holy Family power play. Driven in by Knudsen. Springs off the boards, but behind the Minnetonka net. Nice pinch by Shugel. Strong play by Avar, who muscles it up the ice. Blair plays it well. Up the left side, Knudsen. Backhander in the direction there of Shugel. Sander sweeps in and fires. That's blocked. Loose near the side of the net, and Abel Lindsay will send it the length of the ice as that puck bounces and settles for Paydosh. Ten and a half to go. Bank pass looking for Allen. Skippers have it. They'll get it deep this time. This has been a really 
Strong penalty kill for Minnetonka, not allowing a whole lot of setup for Holy Family, and that's what top-ranked teams do. They can kill you on both ends of the special teams. Mack returns back to five on five. Sander, wicked wrister blocked down from the line. That was blocked and cleared by Lindsay. Here's Valentini to Helmstetter. Zach Rushek sits for Ryan. Scoots past Valentini. Paydosh wraps the boards. Right side, past Keppel. Larson holds for Sedura. Lynn, here she goes. Josie Lynn with Helmstetter. Two on two. Lynn shoots, block down, rebound, and it's eaten up by Hemp on the second chance as well. Well, absolutely terrific positioning right there by Layla Hemp and what she does so well is at the pad control going down in the butterfly position, not allowing that puck to get loose. And I mean, she barely had to move, made it look so easy right there for the uh, skipper's netminder. Well done by her. To the line, Knutson. That one sails well wide. Shugo with a good pinch, keeps it in. Side of the net, helm setter, kicked away. Shugel gets it deep. And Lenk to Helmsetter. Try to feather it back to Lenk. There's Rauch. Knutson across to Shugel. Shooting lane. Catches the boards in behind. Zakrashek will not quite get it out. Bodies all over the ice there, Brandon. Yeah, almost a yard sale. And Shuga will hammer it in. Fire need to change skaters. Maddie Braun is in alone. What a long pass there. Avar. Oh, Ooh. between the legs. Backhand and hits the side of the net. Just got a little off the ankle there. But what a move by Lindsay Avar. To the line. Hemp. One-timer. Finnegan. Deflected Distad to the end wall. Distad down low. Mack. Left pad save, and Blair will cover. Another good sequence of saves there from Sedona Blair, and again, <laughs> impressive dangles by the skippers. We saw Sedura with a little bit of a toe drag move earlier in this game, and then again there by Avar. But wow, just impressive stuff from the skippers. Still leading 3-0 here about halfway through the third. Ooh, that deflected, catches the end boards. Haley Box broke her stick there as well. Broken twig on the ice, Holy Family defensive zone. Hemp, right side for Distad. Goes back here for Hemp. Finnegan, Avar deflects it, Distad takes Ooh. a crack. And that caught Paydosh, who's a little shaken up. Ooh, Ouch. sacrifice the body. Yeah, that one looked like it caught her kind of in the midsection area, and she's a trooper skating off on her own power. She's certainly going to need to get checked up by the medical staff, but oof, that looked like it hurt, and hopefully she's okay, and we'll see her back out on the ice. Actually, I think that got her in the arm. She's kind of grabbing it now on the bench, so we'll keep an eye on her. Hemp to Ryan. Box behind the net. Off the right side, Limke. Defended well by Lindsay in the neutral zone. Right side looking for Hemp. Valentini. Near side, or far side rather, toward Limke. And sent deep by the skippers. They can just keep doing that the rest of the night. Only 7.15 remaining. Comfortable three goal lead. Box, gets out of a tight space, gets out of a box. <laughs> you were waiting for that one. I, I I was. I think I probably used it last night. Rising shot catches the boards. No oh. glass. And Penalty coming up here to Avar for the skippers. As soon as they can touch the puck, I believe. I think it's, I think it's hemp, actually. I'm sorry, correct. You are right. I don't know why I said Avar, but yes, it is hemp that goes. So now Box sends someone to the box. 
as uh, she drew the penalty. That's going to be a roughing minor here on Avar and uh, I'm sorry, Hemp, Josie Hemp <laughs> with the minor. Uh, so she will set for two, Josie Hemp in the box. And uh, again, big power play coming up. Time is running out for this uh, fire team. They need to get something going here very quickly on this power play. Yeah, that was a little bit of like a, a get off me penalty. <laughs> they yes. were tangled up. And uh, Josie Hemp took the extra shot up high and, well, got the roughing. Goldsworthy will clear the zone. Speaking of Goldsworthy, we found the Minnetonka boys score. Do you remember? Yes, yeah. it was a 4-1 win for the Skippers uh, today over the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks. Oh, my word. Goodness gracious. Avar, or I'm sorry, Distad is going to the box here as she just absolutely unloaded on a fire player. And uh, that was a pretty clear shove from Distad and... Boy, that was a nasty-looking collision there. That might be more than two minutes, Brandon. Just my thoughts on that play. So Arma's up. Yeah, we. Yeah, it, it is a five. It was straight. Well, well, we'll wait for it to be put up. I thought I saw the referee with a five. And I, I would tend to agree with him there. I think that that just is a completely avoidable situation, and you cannot – obviously do that and you know if that's uh if this is a boys game where checking is allowed maybe we just get a two minute minor for roughing or something of that nature but because there's no body checking and when an obvious infraction of that incurs or occurs excuse me we're gonna have uh more than just the two and there is the five on the board and i think that's the right call by the officials and i think they've done a pretty good job tonight you know i know people like to rip on the officials but uh, I think that it, that is the right call. And so and I think what we're going to get here is five in a game most likely because we've got I an think, extra player in the box. I don't know if it's a game because or a ten minute Distad is. is in the box as well. But, yes, five and a ten for sure. Which so, would, again, it pretty much is the yeah, game. Well, it's the game at this point. Well, we don't know that. Well, yet. true, but it could be. It could be. Sloan Tia is in the box to serve the five. She has not. I don't think I've seen her on the ice tonight. Skipper's. 10 address, 8 defenders from what I've seen. So Tia in the box, but how about this? A minute 29 of 5 on 3, and then 5 minutes interrupted for Distad in the box. This one's not over yet with just 6 to go. That's toward the net. Back door. Oh, a stick save by him. Oh, she got the stick handle down and made a brilliant save. And it is boarding to Distad, 5 and a 10. As we prognosticated, if you will. Ooh, look out. A little extra shove there after the whistle, but nothing coming from that on penalties. But again, 56 seconds of 5 on 3. And then they'll have a lengthy power play, which you mentioned. Because it's a major, means that uh, even if they score, the penalty will continue, and they'll be able to have that for as long as they need to. So we're going to get a timeout here by Randy Keppel and the fire. Chance to draw things up here on the board, discuss. And um, they really need to score, Brandon. I think that's pretty clear. <laughs> In the next 56 seconds, when you're gifted an opportunity like this against a team like Minnetonka, that is so good, especially uh, on even strength in the power play. And now you get them shorthanded for a while. You've got to take advantage of your opportunities, and that's what good teams do. We'll see if Holy Family can do so right now. Well, and, and big for the fire, too. They rest their top unit. I, I love a five-on-three timeout. Not the first one I've seen today. Uh, Coach Brad Hyduk from Grand Rapids Greenway did it. He actually took his timeout in the second period with his team trailing 3-1. Grand Rapids' top power play unit is dynamic with Mercury Bishop and others. And he used his timeout thinking, hey, why not? We need to try to score and cut this to one goal. They didn't. It didn't work, but I really liked that timeout. I thought it was well thought out. And this one, similarly, too, with 5.45 to go, I would say the same thing. Well, yeah, we know you're a big fan of the uh, the early timeouts. and I am. saving or uh, Not saving them, rather, for the uh, later stages of this game, but I, I'm with you. I think this is a good spot to take a timeout. 
and you have a chance to discuss things a little bit more with your team. And again, this is where uh, good teams find a way to score in situations like this. Not saying that if Holy Family doesn't, that they're not a good team, but obviously if you're a, a team wanting to get to the state tournament and having Minnetonka in your section, this is where you learn your lessons right here. So 5.45 to go. I think we'll wait a couple minutes for Blair, but we'll at least keep an eye on her. It's worth noting here with the fire trailing by three under six to play. Five on three for 50 seconds. Limke down low. Valentini to Keppel. Now up top for Box. Box, Limke, waits. Box through traffic, fought off by Hemp. Kick to the corner. More great rebound control. It's Box up top. Limke loads and tipped wide, perhaps by Lynn. Into the corner, Keppel up top for Box. Toward the net, tipped and just wide. Lynn again out front. Goldsworthy tying up. Valentini picks it up behind the net. We trickle under five to play. Box, back to Limke. Josie Hemp returns at five seconds. Box, waits, shoots, catches the glass. Sharp angle, blocked, set up the ice. Josie Hemp will come to the bench. And that could have been too many players on the ice, I think, potentially for Minnetonka. They, there's they, a, there, there is, is an arm yep, up. Yep. Arm up. There's an arm up here. So 3.13 to go on the major penalty. It's six on four right now. It's touched up. Yep, too many skaters to yep. call. And a full two-minute uh, five on three. 4.27 to go. Well, yeah, and that, that was a really sloppy change from Minnetonka on their end and you could hear the crowd screaming too many too many and uh good call by the official there to uh get that right and boy how many times do you see a two minute full two minute five on three very rare and it comes probably at the most uh important time of the game here so they're gonna have about a little bit less than half of this game left on five on three Plus, they still will have another minute and nine seconds of power play time of five on four after that. So, again, Holy Family has been gifted. It's a belated Christmas gift for the fire <laughs> right here. they got to take advantage. So, Matt, I'll ask you, when do you pull the goaltender? Good question. I'm waiting at least until 2.30, 2.45 at the very earliest, only because it's a three-goal deficit. But... You could make the case to pull her even earlier than that, maybe at the three and a half mark. But I say they wait at least a minute. I think you have to at some point on the five on three. I would agree. And make it six on three, but they won't for now. Box, Limke, shot, hemp, save. She's down. They jam away, puck behind the net. And it's oh, another penalty coming here. Checking wow. behind the net. And Ava Lindsay is beside herself. I mean, it doesn't really change anything right no. now. It doesn't, but she is absolutely furious. And she might have, I don't know if I saw the referee signal a misconduct, yeah. but he was very adamant behind the net about her going to the box. Yeah, two and two yeah. ten. So she's going to get a misconduct two and here a ten. as well. Oh, my gosh. It's getting crowded. In the, I mean, these Braemar penalty boxes are not that big. No. There's four skippers in there right now. It's a party down there. It's Sedura and Hemp both in there. I, I don't even know what to say right now. Well, Again, this is one of those situations. Again, it doesn't really mean anything because that that penalty cannot even begin right to be. Oh, there's going to be a fifth. Yeah, Gemma McAlexander. That's your eighth defender in the box. So there's five in the box right now. Five in the box because someone has to serve the two. They're jumping up and down. <laughs> this is bizarre. Absolutely I mean, bizarre. What. But again. Doesn't change anything. That penalty cannot even begin to be served for another minute 43. Right. Coach Keppel, pull the goaltender, yeah. please. <laughs> we'll wait and what see what are we gets. waiting for? Valentini to Limke. So just a 10 misconduct. She was, as you said, adamant on uh, that penalty call box. Missed the net there. Goldsworthy. Can she clear? Limke at the line. 
box, shot. Hemp fights it off. Oh, and gets down, gets the pad toward the net. Still loose. <laughs> oh, box retrieves. Valentini from the dot. Hemp squeezes it. Great saves by Hemp. Absolutely been terrific in this game. But uh, again, just under siege here. I would like to see Holy Family pull their goaltender here. I'd say right now, honestly, I would at this point of the game as well. Well, yeah, what, you what's got the nothing to lose. What are you going to, okay, you lose by four instead? Come on, let's do it. Limke, we've had enough chaos in this third. Let's sprinkle in a little more. One timer, just wide from box. Is Limke going to hold? Barely. She does. Grayson Limke, 315 in the game. They go cross for Valentini. Behind the net, Keppel. Up top, Limke slides it to box. Shot blockered away. Keppel throws it out front. Skippers clear toward the line. Great hold by box. Limke under three to go. Box pad save turned away. Keppel behind the net. Valentini. They play catch out front. Great block there by Finnegan. Skippers are scrambling everywhere. It's Abel Lindsay who sends the puck down the ice. Thunderous applause from the far side at Braemar. So the one penalty is about to expire. Now the next one will kick in. So we'll get a minute five here of five on three, four of the fire. Thank you for keeping track of all this. <laughs> of You're course. doing great. Thank you. 2.17 to go. Blair still in the net. I have, I, I, I'm out of words. Box moves down and scores. Well, there's your goal, and uh, that's a big one, obviously, for the fire. And now I think that incentivizes head coach Randy Keppel just a little bit more to pull that goalie. You've got potentially, so I believe we're going to go to a five on four here, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Power play. We should. The the Well, no. Well, hang on. We'll, we'll find out. The skippers have... Because four on the ice. Because the 50 up there is Distads. That cannot come off the clock. That's right. You're correct. So is the minute 42 going to come off, and now it's just a 50-second power play? Is that? I believe so. I think Minnetonka will see how they get things squared away, but it, it is going to be a five on four, I believe. Because there, there's four skaters out it's four. there. Yep, it's yep. four. And so, I, got, I, got the four, I got the four fingers. From the official. Yeah, so Sidura wasn't sure if she was supposed to be on the ice or not. So, Holy Family, though, they've only got, what, four skaters out there right now. They're going to need to throw a fifth on there. And uh, Randy Keppel, the head coach of the fire, trying but, to figure out what's going well, on because he's if, just as confused as everybody else. Well, free time out for Holy Family as well. Keep your top... Uh, power play skaters out there. Maybe they stay out there anyway because you're coming down the stretch. 3-1 game with 2.08 to go. I yeah. believe this should be a 5-on-4. Now, what penalty comes off? Well, I'm not sure. The distad penalty cannot come off. Right. So that's with 50 seconds. But the minor that just kicked in, they scored on that power play. I believe that, that 142 should cut, come off the score. That would be my understanding. Correct. So. I, I got to say, <laughs> this, uh, we, Pete and I, Pete Wagner, if you're watching, when we did this section final last year, we had a similar clock thing where it was like, <laughs> what penalties should be up there? How many should be on the ice? Well, they need, I think the box is a little confused here as well. Yeah, about, they just sounded the horn. Yeah, it looks like we're playing. All right, so it is a five- on four power play here, which we assume will be for 43 seconds. Yes. And then Distad will have to stay in the box. Whoever is serving the penalty for her comes out. And we'll keep an eye on a Sedona Blair as well here. As she is, she's got the signal, and here she goes to the bench. All right, so it's a six on four now with a minute 45 to go. Fire trail by two in this crazy conclusion to the Walzer Invitational. Tonka gets to take shots at the empty net, though, as they're shorthanded. They don't have to worry about icing the puck at the moment. 
90 seconds, Valentini through the middle for Helm Center, left side. Sidura ties up, pulls the puck out, floats for Limke. Here goes Helm Center. Dances in, behind the net, box, gonna have a chance. Oh, and it's a huge block. And Ava Lindsay sacrificing the body. Skippers only have four out there right now. This is an extremely tired unit for Holy Family that's out there. Knocked down with a high stick there by Haley Box. 57.2 to go. And the faceoff will come into the fire zone. Now, Skippers still only have four. I think they should have five out there now, shouldn't they? Uh, they do have five out there now. Do, oh, yeah. they do. Okay. Must have missed that. So, faceoff, of course, means that Blair will have to come back into the net. So, as it sound, stands right now, we'll have a five on five. Well, no, now there is only four out there. Oh, you're right. There is. There was five at first, and now there's four. But there's no oh, penalty. Now, now, now oh. here comes the fifth. There we go. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> so we've got a five on five. <laughs> like nothing happened. Are you keeping track of all that? Paydosh to the point. Five on five after all of that. Sedona Blair's in the net still because the faceoff in the Holy Family end. Avar doing great work along the boards, just eating up time. And after all that chaos, Minnetonka back in a pretty comfortable position for now at five on five. Blair's going to go to the bench as it sent up the ice. Skipper's able to send it back to Valentini. She reverses course away from Avar, up toward box. Played off the glass and down. And this will be icing because we're five on five. 19.1 seconds to go. A six on five faceoff here. And really, one last chance for the fire. Yeah, you got to get something to the net quick here and get your top line out there. But again, this is... A very fatigued group here of the fire. I mean, the skippers are too, but see what we get. Limke tries to push it forward, clear down the ice for another icing. Does eat six seconds off the clock. 13 to go, 3-1 lead for Minnetonka. Haley Box on the power play, cut it to 3-1. But Holy Family through all that could not get closer. Backhanded in from the line by Paydosh. It's loose. Bodies on the ice. A few seconds to go. It's Lindsay with the final touch. One final blast of the horn by Lynn. And that's going to do it. The Minnetonka Skippers have won the 2022 Walzer Invitational here at Braemar. Well, what a game this was. Brandon and the Skippers. Of course, they finally got past Andover last night after... Six games in a row losing to them, and they beat a, a very good Holy Family team, too, here tonight. And, again, I think it's very likely. I'm going to go out and say it right now, and I think you would agree with me that we'll probably see these two teams in the section final uh, here in February. Not to discount those other teams in Section 2 AA, but, again, I think these are the two best teams for sure in the section. But, again, a great battle here. We had a lot of penalties. Uh, we had that in the section final last year. And, uh, you know, Holy Family certainly had their chances. The door was open wide for them to try and come back. But, unfortunately, I think that third goal right at the end of the second period was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, uh, of trying to come back in this game. But there's a lot of positive takeaways for both teams. But I also think there's some negative takeaways from both teams as well. Um, so you'll, you'll look back on this game, I'm sure. And uh, these teams are going to look different come February. And I think there's a very good chance we see them again. But very evenly matched. And I don't think it's a surprise to see a one-two goal game here tonight. No, definitely not. I, I would agree. Definitely the top two teams in the section this year. Um, that third period certainly doesn't do anything to, uh, to dim what could be a potentially budding rivalry. Anytime these, team plays, these teams play, uh, seems to be a lot of penalties, a lot of feisty play, but it's, uh, it's a good, good growing rivalry. And, and Josie Hemp is uh, talking to one of the officials, probably maybe the one that she uh, spoke to to get her 10 minute misconduct. And uh, I don't know if we're going to have, is there a trophy presentation or anything? I'm candidly not sure, but 
Great tournament debut for Holy Family. They play second. I have to imagine they might be back again. Oh, that's T-shirts. I was wondering what that was. I was going to say that's a weird-looking trophy. Grace Sedura's got the T-shirts. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Holy Family gets some bumper stickers or something. I don't know. But do, do they get a free team car or what? I mean, <laughs> Yeah, there are a couple nice Walzer vehicles parked out front. They should get one of those. Why yeah, not? Yeah. Who, who gets to drive it one day and <laughs> that type of thing. But, yeah, Walzer's been such a great sponsor of this tournament and uh, doing great work in the community. And they put on a great tournament here. They'll take some pictures with their uh, pile of T-shirts. They, they should put them on over the jerseys, right? Yes, yes, for sure. But a great tournament, though, Brandon. I think uh, we can say that. Again, not a lot of great quarterfinal games except that Maple Grove Minnetonka one. But the semis, they lived up to the hype, and the championship was very strong here as well tonight. So I think, uh, again, this mini state tournament preview as uh, Pete Wagoner likes to call it, and I'm sure a lot of others would agree. But we've got uh, a great amount of talent out there on the ice. And if my uh, math is correct here, I've got 61 commits on Holy Family and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 yes. on Minnetonka for a total of 14. I mean, that's a whole roster right there it is. of D1 players. And uh, going to be impressive to see how they advance in the future. Yeah, really just a, a great game tonight, like you said. Uh, I think a great, you, you said it, state tournament preview, right? I mean, we're about halfway through the regular season. We get a big game like this in a big tournament setting. And, uh, yeah, it was a good one. You know, Sedona Blair was really the star to keep her team in it through two periods. But a big shout-out to Layla Hemp. She did it last night. She did it again tonight. Uh, if I had to name a player of the tournament, I might have to go with Layla Hemp. But, um, but I don't know if they do that or not. Who knows? But uh, Minnetonka wins it. It's their first title here at the Walzer Invitational. I don't know how many appearances they have. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but first title here at the Walzer. And I think we could be looking at a new number one. But uh, up for the rankings committee, as always, to the side. Yeah, it should be interesting to see what we get. I think uh, Minnetonka has earned potentially the right to be number one. I'd, I'd have to look and see 